Uh, Mike Snyder, WTAM. Chris, first off, good luck to you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, just a, uh, two things, actually. Just kind of a follow-up on uh, your talks with LeBron in this period before he can become a free agent. How often will you talk with him, or how will that work? And the other thing is Dan made a point last Friday about how the regular season and the postseason Really, there's, there's like almost no connection to it. In your evaluation process, what do you see as, you know, why the teams come up short and why the regular season hasn't really transformed to the postseason mm -hmm. the last two years? You know, Mike, with regards to your first question, um, we're not going to get into specifics with LeBron and conversations that we're having. We have a plan in place and a system. We're going to follow that. But it wouldn't be fair for any, like what we've done the last five years, excuse me, last five years for any negotiation to have it public. It's just not something that, that we want to do at this point. Um, as far as the playoffs, you know, we've, we had a tough ending to, to a, really, a really very good season. Um, and we're in the process now of evaluating, okay, our team is good enough to get to a certain level. What do we need to do to push it over the top? You know, Dan talked about how many teams have, have won the championship in, in the last 20 years or so. We're studying that, looking at those type of things. What changes can we potentially make to keep pushing this over the top? And we have to be ready for whatever that opportunity is. We're, we're lucky enough here that when there is a big opportunity, we're able to make it. We don't know where that opportunity necessarily comes from. It come, could come from trade, could come from draft, could come from free agency. We just have to be ready for whatever it is and what's in front of us. Dan, Pat McManaman with ALL Fan House. Hey. Uh, with respect to how you want to go about the coaching search, the Tom Izzo stuff has gotten to be a little bit more than rumor. I mean, it's all over the place. The AD at Michigan State has said, you know, you guys are, you're interested in him. Could you just tell, where do you stand with that? Where are you with that? I mean, realistically, and it's I, all over. I'm going to throw it to our general manager because he, believe me, he's, he is running this head coaching search from top to bottom and was doing so prior to the, to the change last week. So, Chris? Yeah, Pat, obviously we, we know that's out there. You know, a week ago there was two other coaches that were out there in the forefront of things. Understand things are a big deal with coaches all right now. Um, you know, we have had conversations with, with his camp. We're not going to go into specifics about those conversations are. We've talked to a number of candidates, and we've been talking to a number of candidates since Mike, Ra Mike Brown was not retained. So this is part of the normal process for us. And until we get to a final conclusion, there's really nothing we can go into. Chris Kenny Rody, ESPN 50 WKNR. Can you take a chance with this situation currently, Dan mentioned the most significant hire is the coach, of uh, bringing in a possible college coach who's never coached in the NBA before because recent history says that does not work, maybe not even recent history, going back many years, that that just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, understand, good, respect your question, it's a good question. I think we'll go back to what we talked about initially. It's finding the right guy. You know, to Dan's credit, when he hired Mike Brown five years ago, I think a lot of you probably said, who's Mike Brown? You know, can he, can he really coach LeBron? But to Dan's credit, Mike did, Mike did a wonderful job and did some nice things for us. And for that, we're, we respect him and value that very much. So going forward, it's about finding the right fit for our culture and finding the right guy. So right now, we're open to anything. Could be assistant coaches, could be NBA coaches. We're open to a broad range. I think that's how you have to... When you go into a coaching search in any team, any situation, whether you have a free agent or you don't have a free agent, teams that I've worked for, that hiring the head coach is always the most important hire because that's the hardest job in the organization. Follow up on that. Are you more inclined to get it done quickly or are you willing to wait to see who else could possibly be available and I guess going along the lines of the finals to see if those, either of those coaches might be available? We're willing, to, we're willing to wait till we find the right guy. We find the right guy, we'll make the decision, we have another press conference like this. There's no timeline for us. Hello, guys. Brian Winhurst, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Dan, um, have you settled a contract with Chris? Is he all set to go as general manager? And considering how fast you moved on it, you obviously felt pretty confident that he could uh, take the promotion. Chris is under an existing multi-year contract. He won't enter free agency for many, many years. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we certainly, as, as the positions have changed here, uh, or the position has changed, uh, we're certainly talking about, uh, you know, some adjustments to, to that contract. So that's where we're at on that. Believe me, the reason we like Chris as much as we do is, is, is how good he is at negotiating his own contract. <laughs> you know, we, we just see how, how good he is. So, you know, <laughs> we're, we'll be, we're all set there. 
Hey, Dan, you, you talked a little bit about this in the conference call the other day, but how would you answer the critics out there that are saying mm -hmm. that this is chaos right now, mm -hmm. that they've fired a coach that won 71 games over the last two years, that the GM was either forced out or whatever the case may be, but how do you assure people that things are under control with the Cavaliers? Well, as, as I responded to, I think on the call, and again, we had a lot of technical difficulties. I'm not sure how much what I said even, even got over there. But, you know, if you took the other approach that you do nothing and nothing happened, I think the criticism would be just as loud. So you really have to ignore this, this talk and banter and noise. Do as much analysis and research as you possibly can. You know, ask yourself, hey, what are the great things that people have done for you to get, get you to this point? And believe me, we, we think that you know, both Mike and Danny did great things for us, and, and we're, at, we're at a certain level and a great foundation. Um, but it was our view that, that the risk or the benefit outweighed the risk of, of making some significant changes here to uh, get us over, over the hump and get us to where we need to be. And, um, you know, there, again, there's no sugarcoating that. And I think the franchise is, is determined, is, is passionate. And then I think, I know we are. I know Chris is, and I know Lance is, and I know whoever we hire as head coach will be. And we just had a meeting with our 250 full-time, you know, non-basketball, I guess, people of the business side and public relations and sales and marketing. And you know what? These guys, I mean, they work their tails off every single day. And, and, and we are... <coughs> more determined than ever. One thing that we told them, they asked a good question, and then you may be interested in this. One of, the, one of the people they were asked, they said, I'm in sales, I run sales, and what should we tell people when you know, they're trying to run new season tickets and everything? How should we respond to kind of the question you just asked? And here's, here was what I suggested, the answer was, first of all, I told them, well, first of all, you're doing a great job. You must be saying something good because based on the metrics I'm seeing, things are going great. But what I would say is that we never can guarantee the outcome, right? Because that's why you play the games. You know, we can't guarantee the outcome. 3.33% of teams win an NBA championship every year. 96.7% don't. But what we can guarantee is that we will absolutely do everything and anything in our power, motivational-wise, passion-wise, financial-wise, uh, Risk-wise, trying things, you know, making adjustments we feel is necessary until we get to our goal. That we can guarantee our supporters and our fans. How could you ever guarantee? You can't guarantee a championship unless you're Rasheed Wallace or something. But you you can go ahead and and guarantee that you'll do everything you can to get there. And that's why guys like Chris and Lance and whoever we hire, you know, w we will believe those are the best people at the time to make us to, to get us there, to get us across the the finish line. How do you sell that though to a prospective coach, Dan, when you just? Fired a guy who won 71 games or whatever it was the last two years. Yeah, not, don't, not, let's not exaggerate, Tom. 61, 60, 61. Well, that's 100, 71. 43 71 would be 71 and 11, right, or something. 143 in two years. Right. So, well, 120 something. 27. Right, 127. right because, because those are the means, not the ends. I mean, those, let's just face it. Those are the means and not the ends. The ends are the NBA championship. And whatever team wins the NBA championship this year will have several less losses or several less wins than we had. Um, one will have, I don't know, 11 or 12 less. Uh, the other will have maybe three or four less. So, you know, the regular season record are means to an end. It's not an end in itself. And, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to shortchange Cleveland, Ohio. And, and, you know, everybody, you know, again, going back to the stuff that gets emailed to me from various places where people blog and stuff, this is not about franchise value. This is not about the payroll that we spent or didn't spend. I mean, this is driven solely, I mean, solely by the motivational factor of delivering a championship to this city, period. And we believe that's LeBron's goal. Uh, it, there's no question he stated it. It's Chris Grant's goal. It will be our new head coach's goal. It's Len Komorowski's goal. It's, it's anybody and everybody. And you know what? We're just going to keep going until we get there. All that other stuff, franchise value, all this other monetary things that people think it all comes down to, that'll follow it. To us, you know, we need to, we just need to put this franchise in the best position, always have it in the best position to give it the best odds or chance to deliver that outcome that we talked about. Hey, Dan, Vince Gill with Detroit News. You know, this is Chris Grant's news oh. conference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. I guess this question will be for either one of you to answer. Um, you noted that you guys wanted a winner and a defensive-minded coach. Obviously, Coach Izzo kind of fits that mold. 
But as far as the coaching search and as a whole, how do you, what type of response are you getting from coaches who aren't sure about LeBron's whereabouts come July 1st? What type of response are you getting from those guys? Um, we're getting a great response. You know, people look at this organization, and they've seen what it's done over the last five years, and they're impressed. They're really impressed. You know, they, they, see, they see the games on TV. They see what our business side has done. They see the sellouts of people coming to the games. They know the community. They see the close-knit organization run together from a business and basketball side. So people look at this and go, wow, that's a desirable place, and I'd like to be there. Now, just as a follow-up, do you have any trepidation, either one of you, for hiring a college coach without any NBA experience? Once again, it's about finding the right guy. So you find the right guy, put him in place, surround him with the right pieces, and you move forward. Les Levine with uh, Time Warner Cable, uh, both to Chris and to, uh, to Dan. Um, I think you were probably confident going into the playoffs that you had the best team, and despite what everybody says about not surrounding LeBron with the, the proper personnel. And if you, if you buy into your 2-2 your coming back for Boston, and you're in pretty good shape, and whatever happened in game five to make that happen, we're now hearing trade talk. What, if you felt confident in it, and whatever happened in game five forced whatever the outcome was, why wouldn't you essentially stay with the same team next year? Try it again. You know, this, less, this time of year, um, there's always a lot of conversations and rumors, if you will, that are out there. You know, so this person is saying this, this person is saying that. We can't necessarily control what being, what's being said by a certain media outlet. I will tell you, tell you, as part of my job, is to improve the team. And this time of year, whether with, with the draft and with free agency coming up, we're going to have conversations. Now, at the same time, we're very proud of our guys. We won 127 games in two years. But at the same time, we want to be able to push deeper in the playoffs. So we have good guys. We have a good core group of guys that have competed at a high level. But at the same time, we're going we're gonna to continue to look to push them. And if we can improve, we'll make, it, we'll make a decision to move forward. Dan, since you are a uh, Spartan alum, I'm curious as to what, what kind of feedback have you gotten from other Spartan alums about the fact that you, you guys are pursuing Izzo, have, pe have people, Michigan State people, come up you know, to you and said, leave our coach alone and you know, go I, someone else or what? Um, the These guys are from you know, Detroit, by the way. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been reading Drew for many years. I know. Um, I haven't really heard from a lot of people. Now, I've been, I coached two Little League playoff games last night and flew here early this morning, and I was busy yesterday. So, I, you know, I haven't paid a lot of attention. My, my email I'm behind on, so... I, the, the truth is, I don't have any. I don't know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you know. We, we're not even, but we are really not. In Chris, you know, I'll let you talk more to this because there's there's more there's more, you know, there's more threads and more things going on as we talk to a lot of coaching candidates. I'm just reacting to the stuff that's been in. I assume you're saying the stuff that's been in the newspapers and all the media. So, you know, a lot of people don't believe. I believe it or not, as you know, you know, people sometimes. When things are in the paper so big, I'll, I'll get a few emails, not necessarily on this, but on a lot of things. Is this true? Is this not true? And, you know, we can't answer things. We don't comment whether it's true or not because if you answer one way, you know, then when you don't answer the next time, it's assumed to be the other way. So, Chris, yeah, I'm mumbling. I, I'll let you take it. You know, again, we're, we're, <laughs> we're looking at a lot of different people, a lot of different people, and we're going to continue with our process. Everything we do, whether it's the draft or free agency, we like to go do one of dance things. We like to go deep on things really find out if it's the right fit for a person. Do they, do they fit our culture? Are they a winner? Are they defensive-minded? Are they a good communicator? Are they a good leader? And those are the things we're going to continue with. So this is, there's no timeline to our process. Find the right guy like we talked about. could be on Sunday. If we don't find him, we'll wait as long as we have to wait. Chris, Darrell Ryder, ESPN 850 WKNR. Uh, obviously, everything centers around LeBron this offseason. He's the big chip. How do you, as a general manager now taking this over, build a basketball team not knowing if you have him, but also trying to build it in case you don't have him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're building the team uh, based on winning. So that's the great thing about the situation. Why I'm so excited about the situation is our decisions are based on winning, nothing else. And Dan has allowed, allowed us and given us that platform. So as we move forward, what's, what's great about that is LeBron's been a big part of that. He's helped us build that culture. He's helped us establish that leadership. He's helped us to, you know, he's been defense, he's been first team all defense. I mean, those are, those are, those are great things. He's helped, he's helped get this organization to a certain level. Now our job is to keep pushing it to the next level. 
So as we go forward, our decisions will always be made on winning. That's what's fair to our players. That's what's fair to the fans. And that's what's, that's what's fair to all the employees who give their life 20, almost 24 hours a day here. Chris, two quick questions. Um, you just touched on this a little bit. This franchise has done great things in five years. Mm -hmm. How much of that is because of LeBron? Uh, I think LeBron is a big part of those things. But in, in the game of basketball, it always takes more than one player. And if you know LeBron, you know that his teammates are very important to him. And he is a great teammate. I think we've seen that over the year. One of the best images I have in my mind of LeBron is him jumping in Z's arms. And I was worried Z's back might crumble. But that's one of my, the best images. And what that says is just what a great teammate he is. And so, you know, I, uh, those, are, those are all positive things, all very positive. And second, Game 5 came up. Mm -hmm. And there's still a mystery as to what happened in Game 5, especially with LeBron. Uh, mm -hmm. Not because he shot bad, but because he just didn't look like himself. What, mm -hmm. from your take, what happened? You know, it'd be hard for me to speculate on what potentially happened to another person. I can tell you, as an organization, all of us, including our players and ownership and the front office and the people selling tickets and everyone, was disappointed. <laughs> and we're all trying to evaluate and self-evaluate how we can get better and move forward. Uh, but it would be unfair for me to speculate on what if somebody was wasn't feeling well or something, you know, it'd be hard for me to do. But I can tell you, those guys out there feel it just as much, if not more, than anyone else, which is a good thing. That means our guys care. And they do. It shows. We've seen what we've done over the last five years. I'm not sure also what happened. And I, don't, I don't know if we'll, we'll ever know overall, you know, when you, when you pose the question that way. What we can do, though, is make sure that it never happens again. And, you know, that's why you've got to look at, everything as i said the day after right we sat right in this room so we're going to look at everything and anything and we've done most of that process now and there's a lot more to do here this summer mm -hmm. so you know the thing is to learn from it learn try to learn as much as you can i don't know if you'll ever probably a multitude of reasons but just make sure whatever they are that that just doesn't happen again have you gone to him to what was up that night something on your mind yeah you know i again for us to talk about those kinds of things right now is probably not productive for, for him or us or anybody, so probably won't comment on that. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we're not going to get into conversations that we have with our players. Hey, Chris, with everyone still on the staff, with your assistant coaches, your next head coach, how much authority will he have to make changes to his assistants? Yeah, it's a good question. And going through this process before, uh, we have a lot of talented assistant coaches. We really do. We have a good staff. These people have done a nice job. So when you, when you go out and hire a head coach, you want to give that head coach the authority to hire their staff that they trust and are comfortable with. But I think whoever we hire will recognize that, hey, I need to, I need to, I need to look at what the accomplishments of what these guys have done. And, uh, I mean, we personally would recommend them highly to anyone because we, we think they've done a, a, a very nice job. Chris, Tony Zarella from 19 Action News. Congratulations. So just to be clear, are you saying that the search continues and unequivocally there is no offer for Tom Izzo? Just to be clear, we've talked to a number of candidates. We'll continue to talk to candidates. We'll continue to do in our search, but we're not going to get into specifics about whether an offer was made or wasn't made or who we're talking to or what those conversations are. At the appropriate time, we'll have an announcement. We'll all come back here, and, and we'll have the next guy that's going to lead us out there on the court.